So, welcome to 155. Welcome to 155. Have a seat. Have a seat. I was just thinking about that girl today, and I'm like, I wonder what's going on with Hannah Harris. And then just, bam! That just shows prayer really works. Prayer for Hannah. Boom, Hannah shows up. That's how that works. Shut up! All right. Listen up, tonight I'm going to start by reading a little Psalms 40. Psalm 40 re reads, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock, and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see in fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside false gods. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us that no one can recount to you. Isn't that true? Isn't that true all the cool blessings that God has done for you? I mean, right now, if you just turned to your neighbor and started listing all the cool blessings that God gave you, it would take all night, right? Go ahead and start. Just start telling the neighbor next to you everything cool that God has done for you. Just all the cool blessings that they've done for you. Psalms 46 says, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have pierced. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. So tonight we're going to be talking about a little Psalms 40. And tonight, really what we're going to be doing is finish it up talking about God's will is whatever. And Chesney and, and Chris kind of started this message off, and so we're going to kind of talk about a little bit of stuff that they did. Um, so let, let, let's first start with Chesney. So Chesney started with the, the God's will wheel, which is always fun to say that fast, God's will wheel. So God's will wheel starts with the works of God out here. And the works of God is just stuff that God's going to do. God's going to do some amazing things. Whether you like it or not, God's going to do some cool works, whether, whatever that is. So just be aware that God's works are kind of happening. The ways of God, you know what, it, you know, being in the way of the ways of God and just and doing the things that he requires and desires is very important. And then we have the will of God. It, and that's one of those ones that always causes a lot of questions. That's one we're going to talk about a lot tonight, which is, is, is what I'm doing the will of God. And that's really hard to decide. And what Chesney talked about is that if your ways are like God, it'll be in his will. And so just kind of tying those two together. And so tonight we're going to talk a lot about the will of God. And then Chris talked about, and I don't know if anybody can see this cool window over here. Got this awesome window. Windows. Window. So... He talked about that we have all this cool stuff going on for God. And the first one is influence of others. So we have people around us, like in this youth group, that influence us, whether that's good or bad, depending on what that influence is. And that changes how we see things. We have life situations. Whatever life throws at you kind of changes what you do and how you react to that. And then we have the leading of the Spirit. So the Spirit may lead you to do something, and you may feel this tug in your chest or in your life to, to do some things. And then we talked about the Word of God. And, and the idea is, is that if you apply the Word of God to all of these things, and Chris had this cool little visual object class, I'm not going to tear this thing down right now, but um, if you apply the Word of God to all of those, and you see the influence of others in life situations, and leading of the Spirit through the Word of God, it will completely change all of those situations. So that's really what that's about, is, is that whole windows and, and making sure that we see all of that. So 
Tonight, we're going to do the God's Will Workshop. And so, I'm kind of a workshop type of guy. Uh, although I don't love doing work stuff, I, I sometimes do it. So, this is going to be God's Will Workshop right here. And we have these cool little paint colors to choose from. And so, we have that, and, and we got this can of paint here. So, this will kind of be our little workshop that we're going to be working on tonight. So, anybody here like to paint? Yes. If, you, if you don't like to paint, call Danny Dorsey. He loves to paint, um, and he's really better at it than I am. So, uh, if, if you need somebody to paint, then uh, that's definitely the guy for you. Is Danny Dorsey. So, before we do that, let's read our uh, verse for kind of this whole series that we're working on, and that is uh, Colossians three seventeen, and it says, "And whatever you do." whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So that, that sounds pretty easy, but I think what we've learned the last couple of weeks is that can be very difficult. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus. So, sound, sounds easy, but real application makes it definitely a lot harder. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So, um, going back to my Psalms 40, if I read verse 6 again, it says, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but my ears you have pierced. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. So, really the first thing we need to talk about as we talk about God's will, the first thing we need to do is discover. Discover God's will is, is really the first thing we need to make sure we're we're following along on. And that should be the first fill-in on your uh, on your bulletin there. And so really discover is, is really what it's all about. So if I read Psalms um, 40-7, it says, And then I said, Here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. And really what's happening here is, is, is David is kind of realizing that God has, has spoken to him, about him, and it's kind of laid this out there. So this is David real, really realizing that God's will is in his life. And so as David starts to go through his life, he realizes, wow, here's something written about a scroll, and it's really about me, so I'm discovering what God's will is in my life. So that's something that David continues to talk about, and we'll continue to talk about it here. So discovering God's will can be a little bit difficult. And, and so we're going to pretend painting is like God's will, right? So painting is going to be like God's will. So if we decide we're going to paint, first we have to choose a color, right? So that's kind of like discovering God's will because everybody's kind of going, well, I wonder what God's will in my life is. Well, is it this color it, or should I do this color? Or should I do this color? Should, should I go to a private school? Should I go to a college? Should I go straight to work? Should I be friends with that person? Should I dump that person? All these colors are all those different decisions that we have to make as we're trying to figure out God's will in our life. And it can be so hard because ultimately the more decisions you have, the more, more things you get to choose from, the harder it is to make a decision, right? If I give you two colors, it'd be really easy for you to go, oh yeah, that one or that one, I'll take that one. But if I give you this many colors, or if I give you a hundred colors and I tell you to choose one, it's so hard to choose a color. And that's really the same thing as God's will. You start overanalyzing all these decisions out there going, well, is this what I should be doing? Or is this what I should be doing? Or is this what I should be doing? It, just like trying to pick a color, that's really the same idea of trying to figure out what God's will is. And so let's just say, for the sake of argument, that we decide we're going we're gonna to repaint this room. And we decide we're going to paint it orange again because orange is awesome. It's the color of God. And so we're deciding we're going to paint the room orange, but we probably don't like this shade. So we decide, you know, let's repaint this, this room orange. So we go to the store, and according to Wikipedia, this isn't all of them, but Wikipedia says there's 43 shades of orange. 43 shades. So if I'm trying to decide what God's will in my life, just like I'm trying to pick a paint color, it gets really difficult. So I'm going over here going, Autumn Glimmer, Frosty Melon, 
toasted honey, autumn harvest, autumn gala, tangerine, mandarin, pumpkin verse. I mean, there's just so many colors. How do I, how do I ever decide? How do I discover what, what God's will is if, if I have so many things to choose from? I mean, how do you pick one of these oranges and go on, well, this is the direction I like. This is going to be permanent. I'm going to paint it on the walls. It's going to be forever. This is something I have to do. What color do I choose? How, how do I decide, right? And so that, it's really the same as, as making your decisions. So, so let's say you decide, you know what, I'm going to... You know what? God's will in my life is says, I, I, I need to join a ministry at the church. That's what I need to do. But do I join the connection team? Do I join the 501 singing team? Do I join the cafe team? Do I join the tech team? Do, do I join the trash pickup team? Do I work in children's ministry? Do I set out chairs? I mean, there's so many things to choose from, right? There, there's so many things to do. What God's, God's will is I need to read my Bible. Well, tonight I'm going to read uh, Genesis... Leviticus, Samuel, John, Revelation. I, I don't know what to read. There's too many choices. I don't know what to do. I'm trying to discover, but I can't figure out which one to discover. And so realize that too many choices can make it so hard. So really the key is, is to not get caught up in all the different choices and just start doing something. So... Discovering God's will is so important. It, and it's really something I think a lot of us take for granted. And I know it's something I probably I don't take for granted now that I've been from the other side, is that you guys at least get an opportunity to be exposed to God's will. You go to church, you have godly friends because you're here. So you must have some godly friend somewhere that holds you to come to 155, or you're the godly friend that invited somebody else to come to 155. One way or the other, you have godly friends around you. So you're being exposed to God's will. But there's people out there that have, have never been exposed to God's will. I grew up never going to church. So I, I probably knew right from wrong, but I, I didn't know God's will for me was to, to not drink and smoke when I was young and, and party and, and all that stuff. It was never exposed to me. So there's people out there that, that aren't exposed to God's will. So. Just be glad that even though it may seem like a lot of choices to decide what God's will is, be happy that you've been exposed to God's will at least, realizing that, you know, that, that's a blessing that other people probably don't get. And you know it, you probably have parents or somebody, an adult, some jerk like me maybe even, that keeps talking about God with you or... or Pressuring you to go to church. Maybe you're here tonight because your parents said, yes, you're definitely going to church tonight. You know what? As much as that may annoy you, realize what a blessing that is that you have that in your life. That somebody's trying to pour God's will into your life and expose you to God's will. So realize that even though that may kind of uh, bother you sometimes, that somebody feels like, it feels like somebody's pressuring you maybe, be happy that that's being exposed to you so at least you know what to do. So what, once you kind of realize God's will and discover God's will, you will completely change your life. But you have to discover it and then decide what, which way you're going to go. So once you discover God's will, even if you can't pick one, you realize I'm going to do something orange, whatever that is, eventually you just need to pick one. And the next thing is you just need to do it. Whatever it is, get off your butt and do it, right? Don't be frozen with decisions of, should I do this, should I do that? You actually have to act on it. You know what, if it's not perfect, God will steer you in another direction. But once you decide to do something, just do it. Stop, stop overthinking it, stop overanalyzing it, and just go ahead and do it. So... If this can of paint is like the Word of God, and, and we're gonna we're gonna paint this room orange, I, I actually have to do something, right? I can't just use this. Bringing this paint can of paint in here doesn't make the room orange. Even if I went out and bought this can of paint, this doesn't make the room orange. 
If, if I said, Danny, I need to make the room orange, I bought you 200 of these, here they are, that doesn't make the room orange, right? You actually have to do something with the paint. You actually have to apply the paint. And God's will is like that paint. There's no value until you apply it, right? You actually have to do something to make it useful. So, so many people spend so much time trying to decide exactly what choice they're going to make. They need to just actually do it. How many of you here have read what you consider a lot of the Bible? Some of the Bible. You've seen the Bible. There is a Bible, right? You, you have something that looks kind of like this at home. So you, you understand there's like stories in the Bible. And it teaches you stuff. And that's God's word. It's a living thing that, that speaks to us. And it's God's word. What I find is that most of us are pretty educated, really, on what's right and what's wrong. Because we've read enough of the Bible. And we understand what, who Jesus is and what he did for us. And, and some of the stories in here and what sin looks like. So we're very educated on it. And we, we hear speakers talk about it and all that. But we don't trust it. We're not, we're not there yet because we're not doing it. We, we understand it. We're hearing it. We, we learned about it. But we're not actually applying it and doing it. So let, let me ask you this. Those of you that read your Bible, do you highlight in your Bible? Who highlights in their Bible when they read their Bible? Now, do you have different colors for different things that you highlight, or is how is the method for how you highlight in your Bible? Different highlight colors. Is there a different highlight color for different what? For different chapters and books. Okay. Anybody else have a method for how they how they highlight their Bible? I just get a color so I don't mix it up. Okay. Andrew, what's your method? Depends on the topic. Depends on the topic. So do you like use purple for love and, and green for grace or something or? How do you do that? I use paint for love, and I use yellow for like an inspirational message, and so on. Okay, so pink for love, yellow for inspiration, that's good. A lot of, a lot of people spend time highlighting their Bible, find cool stuff. So, so why do you highlight in your Bible? Do you remember it? Why do you highlight in your Bible? You spend all this time highlighting it, why do you do it? So you can go back and know it speaks to me. Okay. So you highlighted it so you so you can read it again, right? So later, does anybody highlight a regular book? Like if you're just reading the Hunger Games, do you highlight that thing as you're coming through? Okay, a couple of total weirdos in here, but for the most part, you don't highlight a regular book, right? You're not highlighting Hunger Games when you're reading it. You're not gonna like, dude, I'm gonna come back to this section and reread it later. This is my favorite part. I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight this and come back and read it later. So I, I guess I asked the question about the highlighting and all that is, is you've highlighted this section. You highlight this whole section about maybe forgiveness, right? You find this section, you're like, this is awesome. This, this teaches me. This speaks to me. I, this is something I, you know, this, this is good. This is stuff I really like right here. Let me ask you this. Do you apply that? You go back later and look at your highlighted section and go, how did I do it that today? If I have to judge myself on every highlighted section of my Bible today, and I look at it and go, did I do that? Whatever that is that's highlighted Bible. How do you think you did it that? Do you think you, you think you would score well if you went back and looked at all your highlighted sections and decided how you did today doing that? So that, that's really about the doing thing. It's awesome that we're educated. It's awesome that we want to learn. We're, 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 we're trying to do the right thing. We're learning about all this stuff. But we have to do it. So if you're going to highlight a section, I challenge you to highlight that section and then go every night, go back to that section and go, did I do that today? Today, did I follow this cool thing that spoke to me and I thought it was so great and powerful? Did I actually apply it to my life? So let's try an experiment. Let's, let's try a little experiment. Andrew's going to show a quick video. I want you guys to pay attention and watch this video. Hi, this is Craig Valentine, creator of the whole workout revolution.com bi-week workout system that you can do anytime, anywhere to get amazing results. 
I'm also a certified turbo trainer. I'm here with Brian Calvin, certified turbo trainer, to take you through a four minute body weight workout that will help you get amazing results anytime, anywhere. Now, we're going to use the 2010 workout system, starting with burpees. That's what we'll do for 20 seconds. Down, out, up, jump. 20 seconds of these, then you'll have 10 seconds of recovery. Then you'll do again 20 seconds of burpees and 10 seconds of recovery. Your second exercise, close grip push ups. Hands are shoulder width apart, elbows are tucked into your sides, and you're really going to feel this a lot in your triceps. You do 20 seconds, you rest 10 seconds, you do another 20 seconds of push ups, and then you rest 10 seconds, and you move into what's called a prisoner squat. Now, this allows us to work our upper back without any equipment by keeping our elbows back and shoulder blades together. You really have to squeeze there in order to get your upper back working because it's tough to do that without any equipment. You do 20 seconds of squats, 10 seconds of rest, another 20 seconds of prisoner squats, 10 seconds of rest. And our final fourth minute here, we do the Punisher. Now, you may have heard of the Punisher before. We're just going to do two rounds of it. You do 20 seconds of squats and then a 10 second roll. So you have really no rest in this last minute. Then you do another 20 seconds of squats, and then 10 second hold, and then that's it. That's your four minute total body, 2010 body weight workout from Certified Turbo Series, Craig Valentine and Brian Calicane. All right, all right. So we just watched an awesome video on an incredible four minute workout. You guys feel stronger? You feel, you feel like you, you feel your muscles burning from doing those Punisher squats? What? You have to do it, right? Watching the video doesn't make you stronger and more fit, right? It's like reading your Bible doesn't probably make you a, a better person until you start doing it. Watching an exercise video and going, whoo, that looks tough. Whoo, I'm tired, I need some ice cream. I mean, that doesn't make you more fit watching the video. Right? We all learn the stuff we should do, but you actually have to do it. You actually have to do it. There's this one verse that, that I, I found that really kind of stuck out to me, and it's Luke 6.37, it's, and it's in your uh, outline there, in your bulletin. It says, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. What if this room full of people just did this one thing for a week, for a month, for a year? If you just, one verse in the whole Bible, there's this entire book of all this cool stuff. What if we just did this one thing? Do not judge. How, how weird would school be if you walked around and never judged a single person? Didn't pick out on their outfit, didn't let snicker as they walked by in their rainbow Crocs? Nothing, right? Do not judge. How about do not condemn and you will not be condemned? How much different would our life be in this group alone if just this group says, you know, we're not going to judge people anymore, we're not going to condemn people anymore, and we're going to start forgiving people. Who here has somebody in their life they need to forgive? Raise your hand. Do you have somebody in your life you need to forgive? Yeah, yeah. We all know we need to do it, right? We all know that you need to do forgiveness. Pastor Jeff talked about it for like five weeks downstairs. Everybody realizes they need to forgive, but we don't do it. Here's, here's one verse. If, if you leave tonight and go, I need to do one thing. Pick Luke 637. Start there. If you can do this for a day, a week, a month, then move on to step B, or plan B, whatever it is. Start with one thing, one verse, right? If you can, it's pretty sad you go through the whole week and go, man, I could do one verse in the whole Bible. I, I, I've read this whole thing, I've highlighted it all. I can't do one verse. So, so pick a verse. It doesn't have to be this one. Pick, a, pick one that you think might be easier and try that one. I don't think any of them are easy if you try to do them every day, 24 hours a day. So pick one like Luke 637 and see if you can do it. Because nobody here is less judgmental, less condemning, and forgives more just because they read the verse and highlighted it in their Bible. Have you been coming to church 
every Sunday? Raise your hand if you come to church every Sunday. Good, good. Okay, 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 okay. So, let me ask you this. Is your life any different Monday through Saturday than it used to be since you started coming to church? Has your life changed at all? If it hasn't, you probably don't need to blame the church. You're probably not, if you're sitting here going, man, if the church would teach me more, I could be a better person during the week. You're learning everything you need to learn. We're teaching you all this stuff. You're learning these verses. You're singing songs. You actually have to do it during the week. Do it, do it, do it. All right. So, we've discovered God's will. We realize we need to do God's will. <laughs> Probably the most important thing, though, is inside the camp. And that is that we need to desire His will. Desire His will. Psalms 48 says, I desire to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. Here's David realizing that he's David. And David was awesome. He was this awesome king and stuff. <laughs> but David had a lot of problems. David was a total mess also, just like the rest of us. And so what David realizes is that Oh, while he was trying to discover God's will and do God's will, he was going to fail at this sometimes. The most important thing was in his heart that he desired to do God's will. He desired to do God's will. Because that's really what's important. In your heart, if you just desire to do God's will, it'll make all the difference. It's kind of like that saying, fake it till you make it. We've all kind of heard that saying. If you just continue to keep that desire in your heart, your actions will eventually catch up to your heart. But if you don't have it in your heart, no matter how many times you try to do the actions, you're, you're never going to be good at it. But if it's in your heart first, you will definitely start, it'll start to bleed out of you in your actions. So, you have to do it. Once you've passed do it, you have to continue to desire it. And that's really what God wants from us more than anything, is just that we desire His will. So I'm going to go ahead and call the band up now. Let them come up and uh, get ready to close us out. And the last thing I want to kind of share with you guys is, is, is the walk-away point. The walk-away point is, the more you do God's will, the more you will desire it. The more you do God's will, the more you will desire it. In your bulletin, you have your little connection card here. I ask everybody to take a second, fill out your connection card, at least put your name, email address on there, what grade you're in. If you're brand new, please fill it out completely. On the back, there's a decision section back there. And there's three decisions I want you to think about tonight. The first is, I will accept Jesus into my life for the first time. If you're here tonight, and you don't know about this whole God thing, and you've never been exposed to this, and you're like, what is this all about? But all I know is, I feel this tugging in my, in my chest tonight. That's God speaking to you. And you need to just pray. You need to find a, an adult here, Paul, and just tell them, I, I need to ask Jesus in my life, and let one of us pray with you. And that's your first time. If, if this is brand new to you, you, you need to get on board with this Jesus thing. It'll change your life forever. The next is, I've changed and need to recommit my life back to Jesus. Maybe you grew up in church and it's been a long time for you and things have kind of gotten away from you. You're not, you're not discovering God's will. You're not doing God's will. You're not desiring God's will. And you realize that you need to change. If you do, you need to check that box and realize that you're going to recommit your life tonight back to Jesus because you, you've drifted away. And the third one is, really, this should be a gimme for everybody here. I will desire God's will in my life. In your heart, you realize that your life is better in God's will. And, and you realize that 
your life will be better if you just continue to desire His will. And you just need some accountability, maybe. Maybe you need to tell a friend, hey, this is something I'm struggling with. Can you help me out? You guys can do that if you need to. Just, just realize that.